We have opened a new channel for those who like to look at the detailed process of creating a project. While there are only a few videos, but we are working on their creation. We promise that it will be interesting. The link is in the description. Hi friends! The Chinese surprise us every day, especially in the field of electronics. Until recently, under the phrase welding machine, we imagined a bulky buzzing transformer. But, with the development of pulse technology and the coming of sufficiently powerful IGBT transistors, devices became to inverter type. Such devices are light in weight, compact in size, and affordable due to their low cost. But the Chinese don't stop and make inverters smaller and smaller. Today I will introduce you our guest, the smallest welding inverter available. An inverter costs only $60, and judging by the words of the Chinese, it can provide up to 200 amps of output current. Yes, to be honest, I too, at first looking at this inverter, thought that there was nothing serious to expect and it was rather a toy. Therefore, I decided to make the most detailed review of the smallest welding inverter. To begin with, the net weight of the inverter is only 1.5 kilograms. It is delivered in a sloppy package and during transportation, the edges of the housing will most likely suffer thanks to the postal workers. Dimensions Length 190 mm Height 125 mm Width 85 mm You will not find power wires in the kit. In return, you will find brass terminals for the mounts. And by the way, in this inverter, they aren't a standard, a key and a strap. The inverter doesn't even have a power plug. You need to attach it yourself. Honestly, it is unclear why such a saving. On the front panel, we have a current regulator, a LED indicator for overheating and mount sockets for connecting welding cables. On the reverse side is a fan. By the way, it is a rather high speed and there is full size 16 amps main switch just like in adult inverters. The main wire is copper, no identification marks, but apparently the section is about 1.5 square millimeter or AWG15. Now we will study the stuffing of this unit. I'm anxious to see what the Chinese had put there. I honestly expected that it would be much worse, but here is a full-fledged inverter, only in miniature. I thought that my homemade inverter is quite small, but the Chinese board is half as much as mine. What can I say? The words here will be needless. Immediately striking three radiators. On the first is an input or mains diode rectifier with one of the IGBT transistors of the inverter. The second transistor settled on a separate radiator. On the third radiator are the diode assemblies of the output rectifier. Power transformer is toroidal. Here the Chinese didn't bother much and the primary and the secondary windings were wound with a single core wire. But the wire is copper and thanks for that. This inverter doesn't have a soft start relay and in general there are no any limiters for the charge current of the input electrolytic capacitor. By the way, it's quite capacious, 680 microfarad. In general this is not good. The charge current of the capacitor is very large and one day mains rectifier can burn out in this inverter. The converter is built according to the classical half-bridge topology using two BT40T60 IGBT transistors. These are 40 amperes and 600 volt transistors. For such a baby, it's very good. The PWM microcircuit controls power transistors through a transformer which provided a galvanic isolation. This is definitely a plus. If the power transistors suddenly burn out, high voltage will not go to the control circuit. The output rectifier is classic, full wave with a midpoint, consists of diode D9202. Here are in total four diodes connected to assemblies in parallel. These are diode assemblies with a common cathode, ultrafast with a reverse voltage of 220 volts and a current of 20 amperes. Having experience with such diodes, I can say that they are good. On the board there is a strengthening of the power tracks with additional copper wires of a decent diameter. 
The temperature sensor is mounted on the radiator of the output rectifier as it is the rectifier that will heat up the most. The input diode bridge is for 25 amperes with the reverse voltage of 1 kV. For such an inverter in principle it works, although it could be better. Regarding to feedback of current, to be honest, it is not very clear. There is both a current transformer and an output shunt. Most likely the shunt is used as the current sensor. An additional protection is built on the basis of the current transformer, although I'm not fully sure. The control board is separate. It houses a PWM controller, a standby source microcircuit, and several other microchips, but their markings aren't visible due to lacquer layer. Most likely these are operational amplifiers on the basis of which are built a voltage amplifier from the shunt, feedback, and overheating protection. PWM controller is a CG3525. I didn't think that I would see this particular PWM here. I can say only good words about it because I work with it very often and I'm quite satisfied. A standby source looks at 5 to 10 watts built on a TNY257 chip, powers the control system and fan. The fan is for 15 volts, 0.3 amperes. The quality of the boards is good. It is double-sided with metallization of holes. There is a varnishing coating which is good. There is unwashed flux at some places but it isn't critical. We can see the aluminum power bus coming from radiator of the output rectifier to the terminal for connecting welding cable. It is good. The radiator is aluminum. The power bus too. Everything is clever. But the mount socket is brass. The second mount socket is screwed to the board. The area of radiators and their dimensions are not bad considering the dimensions of the inverter itself and the presence of a fan. Let's summarize what was seen. In general, everything is well assembled. The half bridge circuit is very good. It is certainly not a full bridge, but it works calmly and confidently. The bad thing is that there is no soft start. And second, in my opinion, the standby source is rather weak, given that it supplies a rather powerful fan. But in general, it's not bad. Well, now let's go to the tests. We will weld later. First, let's connect the device to ballast and check its real output characteristics. The idle current voltage is 55 volts. It pleases. There will be confident ignition of the arc. The current consumption from mains without load was 0.2 amps, but it should be noted that at the time of the experiments we had a reduced mains voltage, only 206 volts. The minimum output current is 45 amps. In reality, manufacturer raised it against announced 20 amps so that there was a confident ignition at minimum current. Well, now the regulator is at maximum. As you can see, the maximum current value is 100 amperes. This is an honest maximum output current. I tried up to 120 amperes and an output voltage drawdown to 15 volts was formed. It will be almost impossible to weld at those parameters. To check the anti-stick function, I close the inverter output through an ammeter bypassing the ballast resistance. As you can see, the maximum current is 125 amps. There is no anti-stick function. And here is a confirmation of what has been said in practice. Well, now it's time to weld. I pick up the 2 mm electrode and start. Let's check the arc ignition at minimum current. As we can see, everything is fine. There is an arc and the welding is possible. Now I will burn one electrode without a break and then we will measure the temperature of the power components.
heating is not noticeable. The output rectifier and transformer are heated most of all, but the temperature doesn't even reach 50 degrees of Celsius. In general, I'm not a welder at all. Well, you understand. But the device can really make that. Well, at the end we set the current regulator to the maximum and try to burn a hole. By the way, metal is 0.4 mm thick. Naturally, no one positions it as a professional appliance, but as a compact household device for small tasks, it's quite good. You can weld also with 3 mm electrode, the device can handle it. Among the disadvantages, a weak input diode bridge, the lack of a soft start and anti-stick function. Advantages, a good build, compact size and weight. The price, in principle, it is also acceptable. Perhaps this is all today. Please don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram. As usually, you will find all the necessary links in the description under the video. Well, I have to say goodbye. Until next time, with you was Kassian TV.